So here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna have a look at how we can get some clips down as the timeline. And in particular, we're gonna have a look at these four buttons that we can see just next to our index button here. So the first thing we need to do is come into a library. We'll click here on the library video edits. And in our timeline, we don't see a project opened up just because we haven't opened one up yet or created one. So I'm gonna double click on this streets project and basically you'll see the timeline come to life. Now the quickest way to get a clip down to the timeline is just to highlight it up in the library here. We can drag that down to our timeline. So that's a real easy way of doing that. Then we can trim it down, modify it and edit it and then add other clips to the timeline. We wanna have a look at how these four buttons work. So you'll see they're grayed out at the moment and that's just because we don't have a clip selected in our library. As soon as we click on a clip here, you can see those buttons come to life. So essentially, we're gonna run through what each of these does. So I'm gonna bring my playhead somewhere close to the beginning here, and we'll have a look at this. So with this clip, I wanna select a range, so I can just come to the end here, and we'll select a short range. You can see how long my range is gonna be with the second marker and the frames marker that's popping up there. So nine seconds and 10 frames is the duration of this section. So if I click on this first button, it's actually gonna add a layer to my edit. So we'll click that and you can see it's added a second layer connected to my edit here. So this connected clip will always be connected by this little line that you can see. And if we move it across here, you can see it stops at the end of the clip. We can't move it any further. If we want to do that, then we would move it down to the main storyline, or if it's a connected clip, we can jump to the position tool, and that will allow us to keep dragging it down the timeline to position it in a different spot, and we'll get this slug here as well. Let's delete these two clips. So moving on to the, the next option here, one important thing to note is before we use this, our edit is five seconds and 12 frames long. So when we place our playhead here, somewhere in the middle of our clip, and we select a short section from another clip, we'll just shorten this. So we have six seconds, or they're about selected, of this clip here. When we click on here, it's basically gonna make a gap for our clip and extend the timeline. So you can see my edit is now gone from five seconds to being somewhere around 11 seconds long. So basically that clip has sliced my previous clip in half and made that edit longer. So I'm gonna undo that with Command and Z and you can see we're back to just that single clip on the timeline. So this next option here will basically append a clip to the end of the timeline. So if we select this clip here, again, I'm gonna just select a shorter section of this clip and if we click the append option, it's gonna put it at the end of my clip. So I'm just gonna zoom out here a little bit, Command and minus to zoom out. So you can see my playhead is here. I'll just undo this. And when I click with this clip selected up in my library, append, it adds it to the end of the clip. So basically every time we use the append option, it's always gonna add that clip at the end of our edit. So it's a nice way of getting something on the timeline and just dropping it right onto the end of your timeline. This last option here, we'll go back a couple steps here and we'll zoom in a little bit, Command and Plus. So this last option here will do something similar to the insert edit, except it will overwrite what was there before. So if we select this clip and we use the insert option, you can see it makes my timeline longer. And we'll now undo that. If I use this clip and use the overwrite option, instead of splitting that clip, it's just gonna overwrite from wherever my playhead was. So you can see basically, instead of splitting it as it does here, when I use this clip and overwrite, it will basically overwrite anything that was beyond that point in the edit. So those are the four main different ways of getting things down to the timeline. We also have this video only or audio only option um, here as well, which is useful. And then for these first three buttons, we have the shortcuts Q, W and E, for making those edits. So if we highlight a clip here and tap Q, it's gonna add that as a connected storyline. Move that down here. And we'll jump back to the selection tool. And then W with a clip selected here, will split the clip. So you can see it's broken that clip from the library into two parts. And then if I come somewhere here, select another clip, and tap E, it's gonna append it to the end of the clip. So wherever my playhead is, it's always gonna add that clip 
at the end. So we've added that three times at the end there, we can delete two of those clips. So basically the connect, insert, append, and then overwrite allow you to make these different types of edit down to the timeline. And then using those in conjunction with the selection tool and position tool will allow you to do a lot of the work of moving clips around and modifying things on the timeline. So just as we're also getting clips down to the timeline, we might wanna find that clip in the library as well. So I can do Shift and F, and that will reveal my clip and its selection within the library. So you can see I'm holding down Shift and tapping F, and it's finding that clip or that area of the selection of the clip. So you can see here in the library, it's actually not highlighting the whole clip, it's highlighting the area I've selected. So if I drag this down, you can see it's exactly the same selection of that previous clip. So Shift and F or right click and reveal in browser will find that clip within the browser for you. So there's some tips for getting clips down to the timeline. If you do have any questions about Final Cut Pro, then please do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.